Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Shirtless Plantain Show. This is your host, Tosin, and I am with my boy, Tommy. This is the Manchester United edition. Tommy, how you doing today? Man, I'm, hey, I'm good, man. I'm good. I don't know about that team, but I'm good. I'm glad you're well. That's all that matters. And you look like you got a haircut, so I'm very happy of to hear course, that. Of course, of course. You know, yeah. I, can't, I can't let this team stop their shine. No, not at all. I need to go to barbershop, too. I need to get my hair retwisted, but that's a whole nother operation. You know, when you get your last retwisted, for me, that takes like three or four hours on my day. I was about to say, now, you, you, you lock people. My little brother, he says he want to grow his hair out, so he's about to join y'all soon. I'm like, ah, more power to y'all, man. Hey, listen, a lot of maintenance, man. This is the second time I did it, too. I'll cut it off and start again. Well, I remember I remember you cut it off. Like, I'm, yeah, you cut off twice. I was like, bro, and then you said you're going to do it again. I'm like, ah, I beg. Mm-mm. Yeah. I, look, my hair has been grown faster than that. Have been good. And let's talk about that. I need <laughs> your immediate reaction. You tell me what do you think about United. I need your fresh off the press. You know, we just finished watching the game. You tell me how you feel about United. Uh, talk to me. Well, fresh off the press is a disgraceful team. Like there, there is no. And I'm gonna be honest. Besides, um, Mino, and I'll give Kwambala um a, a pass today because he was mm-hmm. garbage. But aside from him. Mino and Garnacho and Hoyland when he decides to think properly, there's no saving there's this team there's nothing to be saved from this team. Like there's no there's no positive note of like, okay, at least so and so developing, at least so and so took the next step. No. There's players have regressed. Like players For have sure. regressed. There's no positive. It's 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 dastardly what we're seeing. And even the commentators the, the stuff I'm yelling in my living room, the commentators are saying it. So it's not like it's it's not rocket science to see that we're bad and we're discombobulated. It's clear in the open for everyone to see. But mm-hmm. the the coach, that body on the sideline, he's not fixing it. I don't, it's just frustrating because this is like this was this performance, even though we got a point from it, this was it was it's one of the worst performances I've seen us produce in a while. Yeah, I mean, you know, my reaction initially is just like same week, different shit. I mean, I'm in a group chat where people just like, well, can't be just a coach. I'm like, we don't have to bring up the previous situations with Eric, you know, with uh, Jose Mourinho and, you know, Louis Van Gaal and David Moyes and whatever in between. Um, This is just bad. Like I said, March 4th, when Arsenal beat Sheffield United, right? You know, when they beat them 6-0. Yeah. And I compared it to when we played stuff. You know, I was like, I'm not a big stats guy. Like, obviously, I understand how stats work before you, like, XG guys get on my case. Like, I don't really care for it, but I understand yeah. it. I understand why you guys use it to underline numbers. So even when I watched the United Shuffle United game, and I thought about it again, the underlying numbers in that game showed that this is not a really well-coached team, right? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of really, really bad habits that this team does. And we'll talk about it, like, soon. Um, but there's a lot of really, really bad habits this team does. And a lot of it is just bad coaching. And also the coach just does a lot of really stuff, weird stuff, where it's just like, bro, stop being a coward. And my thing is, this de- is the season is dead, right? No offense to Aaron Wambasaka. He's ve- like, this is my issue with people that talk about Rashford and just talk about players in general. And I've said this on previous United Pods. I've said this on other podcasts before. It's a team game. You have 11 players on the pitch. You have 11 players, right? You all play as a cohesive unit. Each person affects the next person. So when I yeah. look at like a Mbappe or I look like at a Vinny Jr., I look at Liao because these are the players who are in Rashford's like level, right? Liao has Teo Hernandez overlapping. Vinny has Furlan Mendy, sometimes Kamavinga, but yeah. any he has a he has enough talent on that left side of thing to help him out. We look at Liao, like I said, Liao already Mbappe. He has no Nuno Mendes. Mendes, and that, yeah, and he has other Nuno players. Mendes is a baller. Yeah, but Nuno Mendes only played seven times a season, but he also has other left backs that play. Yeah. When I look at Aaron Wambasak, and there was a time where I saw him in this game, might have been the second half, where Aaron Wambasak was trying to do an overlap. It didn't work. They didn't even care about Aaron Wambasak going for overlap because they just know technically he's so limited that's not going to happen. And I'll tell you like the difference when players know when the player is good. When Ahmad came on, they didn't really press Ahmad like that because they knew, okay, this boy can spin out the press and he's nice like that. Yeah. So... It's very interesting to see United, just the way they play week in and week out. Nothing has changed. And I think that the coach is a coward because, again, I brought up Juan Pesaka for a reason. At this point, I go get someone like Max Oyedele from the, from the what's it called, from the academy and put Maxi at right back or left back. Bro, they, like, I, we can't, um, Harry Amas, he can't be that bad. Let's see him. Like, mm-hmm. bro, this He's 17, done. but who cares at this point? 
if you're um, was it if you're good enough, you're old enough. Bro, let's yeah. see it at this point. Yeah. Like, and I'm not even saying throw him into the deep end. Uh, I think we play on after this Bournemouth game. I think we play some like not we play Coventry in the FA Cup. Yeah, Coventry in the FA Cup and like other league games where it, it's winnable. Give him some yeah. minutes there. Like, I'm sorry, you can't. And I'm I'm so glad you emphasized cowardness. He's a coward as a manager. Mm-hmm. When that the the biggest indictment of that when it was time to make subs that he brought on Mount, he took off Mino. Which was the absolute wrong decision. Even um the commentator said, yeah, Mino that that um that wasn't um, who I would have taken off. Ca- I would have taken off Casemiro, and it's so true. Casemiro did nothing all game, but because he's older and established, I'll keep him off. It's 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 it's, it's baffling his decision making. Yeah, it's 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 just one of those things where like again, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Mayne out of shape. Um, so what mentions out of shape? There's not a good way of playing football. You know, it's one of those things where it's just like you look at it and you're just like, yo, like this is not cohesive. This is not yeah. cool. Like the way you play, the way that you're doing stuff, it's not it's it's I'm trying to think of the words because I'm so flabbergasted in my brain and in my head. I'm just like, yo, how are you doing this? So it it's it's this it's disjointed. It it doesn't make it doesn't make sense how disjointed he is. Cause that for example, that um the goal we conceded that um the first goal right Garnacho Garnacho plays a bad pass right and they and they um intercept it but if you look at that midfield there was such a huge gap it's crazy mm-hmm. I, I I don't get it it's, it's just it's it doesn't make sense how open and just disjointed we are and it happens every single week. It isn't like this is like a new thing, right? This is something that like United have been doing all season, like mm-hmm. since the since beginning. And it's not because of a new thing with Eric Ten Hag at all. Um, because again, like and we're gonna talk about it right now. Um, what, what's it called? Rugil Gillet. Yeah, if yeah, you Rugilet, know who yeah. Gillet is, and some of you may not know, he's one of the greatest Dutch players to ever play football. Point blank, period. In the 80s and 90s, he was at Milan with Van Basten and Frank Reichard, who if you don't know Frank Rankard, he's the reason why Barcelona picked up and won their second Champions League after 92. That's the size of the point. Rue Gillett was saying how when he looks at Ajax's, when he looks at Ajax when Ten Hag was there, he was questioning like, yo, what is going on with your with your midfield? You know, it's yeah. the same issues United have now. Ajax had then. He got away with it because at Ajax, it's not a hard elite. That's, okay, let me not disrespect the Eredivisie because <laughs> all football leagues are very hard, right? Yeah. But the Eredivisie is not what the Premier League is, right? He wants to bring that sort of chaos to England. It's not going to happen. Any well-structured team is going to eat that press alive, and they're going to just enjoy it. The commentator kept saying it over and over and over again. It is so easy to play against Man United. You just play one pass and you split through. It is like there's Literally. no midfield whatsoever. And um, I'm so glad you brought up that. Who like what you just said is so true because it's so prevalent. Like you said, that midfield is always wide open. One pass and you split the midfield open, and after like. At first, I used to think I was of the mindset, you know, Ten Hag not telling them to do this. This has to be like the players are just losing their head or they're just not trusting. Like, I don't know what it is. It has to be on the players. But I noticed more and more. It can't be because every one is McTominay, one is Mount, one is Amrabat, one is Mino, one is every, every midfielder we've played there. It's been that same gap, that same space. And it mm-hmm. just doesn't it, – it's on the manager. It does not make sense. One pass – it's either one pass or a willing runner with the ball, and they're just right through our midfield. It, it, it's baffling how you see that week in and week out. And, and just because of that space, um, the, the fullbacks have to cover more. The wingers have to cover more, which is why players are tired and gassed. I'm, in the 70th minute, I saw um, someone play the ball forward, right? And Juan Bissaka was literally jogging. He, If he ran, he won that ball. And I'm like, is this man tired or is he injured? What's going on? We're, that space we're leaving is just creating too much um, for the players to cover. And like you said, it's a team sport. It, it's a domino effect. One thing happens, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing, boom, we conceded two. It does not make sense. Let's talk about Ten Hag's decision-making um, because that's clearly like a big thing that he's doing wrong. Um, 
Garnacho's played 30 games in a row at what 19. It's aggressive. It's so aggressive. Like Amash and him should be rotating. Like Shilly should be like back and forth 15 minutes between. Even Rashford looks tired. Hoyland looks tired. Everyone is looking drained and exhausted. And it doesn't help that the sort of football he wants to play is chaotic and doesn't help everybody out. Like you're seeing players who are teenagers looking gassed. Like they're in the prime of their lives. They're tired because they're running up and down. Like this is this is just a madness. 30 games in a row to start at 19. And 19. And like, what, I'm, what I keep saying is this: like this is this is the problem with like Barcelona too and Man United, and like you keep relying on these teenage kids, bro. You need grown ass men. These kid, these teenagers are supposed to. They're still developing. I know United fans are very like mean about some of the players and whatever. You're a teenager. You're supposed to make rash decisions. You're supposed to make dumb decisions because you're a kid. You're supposed to learn. This is your way to learn as a kid. You're supposed to supplement the first team, not complement the first team. You know they, they're not supposed to be that. Exactly, and that's my like you said. They're supposed to supplement. They're supposed to help the team. They're supposed to plug in gaps where it's needed. A nineteen-year-old starting thirty straight games does not make sense. Mm-hmm. You have Ahmad on the bench. Ahmad was injured start of the season, right? That's understandable. He came back, and you didn't play him for how many games, bro? You cannot. And then, for example, in the um, what was that team we played in the FA Cup? Oh my days. That we went to their Newport. stadium. Newport. In that Newport game, there's no reason Ahmad and Forsen and Ethan Williams and all of them should not have gotten minutes. I'm not saying start them, but give them minutes. Even like even you look at Mason Mount's treatment today. Mason Mount constantly gets like 15 minutes max at best, yeah. but mostly five, 10 minutes to play. And it's just like you could tell Casemiro's finished at this level, bro. He's not like you know, one thing I hate about Casemiro, and I can tell his instructions from the manager that one quick pass over the middle he does all the time. That is some Look, shit. He doesn't even scan before he comes. It's so frustrating. I'm someone who's played in the midfield. And one thing my coach, my like my favorite coach, my high school coach, he always said, I won't blame you for trying something, but it becomes a problem when you see it didn't work the first like one or two times what you decide I'm going to keep trying that that's mm-hmm. what Casemiro's brain is there was a time where he played he tried the same pass three times in a row and in in game time I think it was legit in two minutes three times in a row overhead ball to a runner behind each time he got a defender and the attacker was nowhere near it you cannot keep making that pass because then you just give him the ball away keep it at this point, he's cooked. He doesn't check his shoulder. He doesn't – him trying to tackle is ridiculous. You, last week, I forgot who it was. They just skipped right by him. I can't uh, – I think it was Sabasalai. Just skipped mm-hmm. right by him. You cannot – and then subbing, keeping him on for 490, it's crazy. And also, um, to, speak, to just go back on the shape talk, there were a bunch of times when I saw both Mino – and Casemiro at the edge of the box or Casemiro in the box and Mino at the edge of the box. No, someone has to sit back for the possible counterattack. This is not like, I don't think I'm saying anything that's revolutionary or that's too high. Like the stuff no. I'm saying right now, this it's not what you're going to learn when you're getting you learn it. You, you eight, you nine, you 10, you learn that in youth football. You learn that Literally. as a kid. And my, my thing that that frustrates me the most about all of this is the fact that like, it's just, it's affected all the players. Like Kobe Minor looks tired. He looks gassed already. At 18. You know? He's a kid and it's just frustrating. But we do have to give big, 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 big respect to Bournemouth, man. Um, what, what, uh, what's it called? Andoni Irola is doing. He won, what's it called? He won manager of the month manager for a reason. Month. And here's it. the funniest thing about, about their coach, right? I'm going to tell you something. So you can talk. Go ahead, talk. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna finish. Uh, you can talk to me about about him. What do you think about Arola? He's like. There was a. I think coming to the game, you could see they said we're gonna attack that right side of Manchester United and their left, and we're gonna isolate um Solanke with um Kambuala. They, if you notice, um Solanke barely went over to Maguire's side. He simply said, find Kambuala and post them up. And we're going to play down that right. And we're going to get you the ball. Did it work? Absolutely. Both of their goals came from that right side. It came from that right side. So it's clear he has instructions. He knows. He tells them how to play. And 
Uh, also, Justin Cliver, my days. I, hey, I'm a finishing father. like his father, <laughs> finishing like his dad. I'm like, yo, yeah. excuse me. I'm like, what is what is going on over here? Well, like, um, I remember him at Roma and Nice. I'm like, bro, what's what's all this now? Can we um can we flash back to 2012 real quick? Europa mm-hmm. League. Do you remember, yeah. you remember when Bournemouth? You remember when Bill Bow beat United two one and then three two at Old Trafford? Yeah. Do you know who the captain was for Bill Bow? Was it was it um Irola? It was. Oh my days! This man just he's just having fun with us, huh? Okay. okay. May United, as I've said for a very long time. I've been a fan of this club since 1995. This is my football club. I'm not I'm never going to change my football club. It was 05 when I knew that something was wrong at this club. Mm-hmm. It was 09 when I knew that this shit was this shit is bad. bad. It's very very bad. When when we saw Cristiano Ronaldo brought in Owen Obaton and um, Valencia, which Valencia did well, but 2012 towards Fergie's last season, we could tell the writing was on the wall. Yeah. Like who was United was starting Evra Evans, Ferdinand, Rafael. Carrick, Cleverly Park, Young, Giggs, and Rooney. Now, I'm not saying that's like a bad team at all, but a club of United status should not be still starting Park and Giggs and that at their big ages. But you know, that's that's the size. Yeah. The fact that 12 years later, that United got pressed the hell out. This guy's coming to England and still pressing United. It shows that there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But again, I have to give big respect to you know him and what he's doing. Um, Justin Clavert, like we said. Finishing like his father, but can we please give a round of applause to Dominic Solanke? And please, everybody, it's not Solanke, it's Solanke. Please, as a Yoruba man, is that's Dominic Ayodele Solanke? I was about to say Solanke. No, it, that I honestly, he's one of the most like I don't I don't know if this is gonna be blasphemous. Hands up, mm-hmm. I think he's one of the most complete forwards in the league right now. Oh, it's not blasphemous. It's not at all. You know what it is, Dom. Was a prodigy at Chelsea, right? Yeah, like very like played at Chelsea's academy for ten years. He was at Chelsea for three years. Didn't really play much. Was at for Test, got seven goals. Went to Liverpool mm-hmm. for two years, got one goal. Went to Bournemouth. It didn't really look too hot. But do you know when uh, Dom really, really like turned up? When he went to the Championship, that man earned yeah, his man. strike in the Championship. Yeah, man. Twenty nine seasons, twenty nine goals in that season when Bournemouth came back, he scored. Yeah. And that's when Dom was like, yeah. I'm like that. He scored six goals when he came to the Premier League, but this season, yeah, mm. this kid, this kid is developed. And I think that's sometimes what we need to realize about football players. Everyone grows differently, right? Yeah. There's peaks, there's valleys, there's troughs, whatever. But Dom is a very, very good example of just sticking to your craft and grinding. And the kid is what? How old is he now? Like about to be 27 this year? I think year, he's like 27. Yeah, 20, he's about to be 27 this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. 197. So. The kid is finally oh, coming yeah. to his own. He's finally coming to his own. And, like, big respect to Dom, man. Like, I mean, what he did to Willie Kwambala, I mean, fair play to Willie. He, he grew towards the game. And then Willie played very well. Yeah. He did well. Especially for a kid who's just getting his feet. But Dom showed 19. him, like, listen. Yeah, Dom showed him, listen. I'm a big man. I'm a big, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, big man. I'm big man in the, I'm big man on campus. It showed him, it, that, it was the SS1 and JSS1 right there. Absolutely. And, Another thing, like the th- like I like I was saying, how um um Dom is so his his overall game is he will be that bruiser if it needs. Like you know what, if we, if if we're gonna play, if you need hold up play back to goal, I got you. But mm-hmm. at the same time, he's not afraid to run at center backs. He's no, not afraid he... to get in behind, and he has the touch and technique to do it. And he's he's one of those like okay, the game right now is not favoring us, so we just need someone to hold up the ball. Let me back up Kwambala and hold up so I can get the ball. Okay, we're under attack. I can run in behind. I can run at them. And it's it's honestly it's great to see. It was against my team, but I'm a, I appreciate the sport. So it was honestly it was really great to see and witness. And like you said, I remember when he moved from when he moved from Chelsea to Liverpool, and then when he moved from Liverpool to Bournemouth. I remember the jokes. I remember the first season. This man at Bournemouth wasn't in the squad. I think he had like I think he Six moved goals. to Bournemouth. Yeah, when they were still in the prime. Yeah, like they say, people like, oh, this big money, Liverpool prodigy, blah, blah, blah. It takes, and that's another thing. Like, fans give up on players way too easily. It's okay to say a player, you know, this season is, is not it, or he had a bad game back a couple games. But labeling his own trash, it, it's it's bad. I really, so, and this man, like you said, he grew into his own. He stuck to it, said, I know the player I am, and I know how I can grow. 
And that's exactly what he's done. And it's it's amazing to see. I don't know if he leaves Bournemouth because I think, like, there might be a solid, like, prem team for the foreseeable future. But if yeah. he does, a team is going to get a really solid, solid striker in him. One thing quickly before we move on. Obviously, you might have a lot of injuries. You know who has a lot of injuries, too? Brighton. I mean, Bournemouth, excuse me. Bournemouth yeah. has a lot of injuries, too. So yeah. I don't want to hear that excuse from Eric Ten Hag. Let's, no. talk about what's, let's talk about what's next for May United. Um, I'm going to have the list of games underneath here. So these are the games May United have coming. Um, Coventry in the FA Cup, Sheffield United, Burnley, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Newcastle, and Brighton all in the league. Those last three are Godspeed. Yeah. Guys, so, <laughs> both boss moments, man. Those yeah, last three United, guys. you better get ready to learn Conference League. Um. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, what's next for May United, man? Like, we've said this over and over again. We know what needs to be done. Um, I think that Eric is cooked, man. There's nothing you can generally oh, do. I feel like you are now the lame duck. you just like where uh, Pochettino is. Like, it, we all know the writing's on the wall. The style of football is not good. Your post-game conferences are not good. Like, your tactics, your subs. Excuse me. I'm so bored because I'm talking about Eric Ten Hag. Excuse me. I'm yawning me. He makes me just tired. Um, I'm very, very exhausted just constantly talking about it. And this is, this is again, listen, it's a hard job. I'm not trying to slate him at all. Like, I'm generally trying to be as nice as I can be because I understand it is a very, very difficult job managing a football club, especially a football club the size of Manchester United. But you sign up for this, and this is the results when you don't do your job. I mean, you know, the writing's on the wall for Eric. So what do you think's next for Man United? Um, uh, Short term right now, Coventry. For as bad as we look, we have to win that. I don't, I don't care. We have to win that. And then we play um, – this this is the run I was talking about. Then we play um, – Sheffield um, United. Sheffield and Burnley back-to-back. Hmm? Get those young players in. Harry Amas. Maxi um, – yeah, Maxi. Um, um, no, not that – not Asmir. He's too young. But mm-hmm. there are players there that we can get in, and let's see what they look like. Because at this point, yeah. the season is done. So let's see if we have a solid foundation to build, so we can start getting a plan together. And for a long term, the Ryan's on the wall, and I think I think Eric Ten Hag knows it too. Because if you if you watch him on the sideline, he was just he was he was a statue. They didn't mm-hmm. give instructions, didn't say anything. So I hate to say, it, but yeah, he's gone. And again. I was I was a defender of his, especially after last season. I said, you know, we had injuries, we had boom boom, like we had injuries, we had so and so, all that stuff. But I feel like at this point, you can't use the injury excuse anymore because you've gotten some players back. But yes, when you got players back, you lost them. But you still got players back, like that midfield, right? That is the preferred midfield that he wants. That's the mm-hmm. that midfield. Everyone's healthy besides Mount. But even so, well, even when Mount was healthy, he still wasn't starting him. So. No. So I'm guessing this is the midfield he wants. And do they still not look disjointed? Yes. And we have um you had a you had the the right winger you wanted for a hundred million. We got him for you and the Ahmad, you didn't let him go on loan. So you had that right wing option you want. You still stuck Garnacho through for 30 games. It's done like I'm there's only so much grace you can give before you just say, All right, man, this is just not good enough. This is bad. So yeah. I think, I, I, think very done. I will say I'm very disappointed in, in Bournemouth. Only 20 shots against May United? You suck. <laughs> Only 20. Your mates are getting 30. Your mates are getting 15 at, at halftime. You got 20. Okay. Come on, man. Step up. Okay. Uh, do you got anything else you want to add before we get out? Uh, Honestly, just, again, I'll keep saying this. This win made the FA Cup. That's it. This win- also, Ahmad, when he came on, I like how he plays. He's a tidy player who can help advance. And every time every time I called for a mod to play, people always say, but look how small he is. Do you guys not understand the sport? <laughs> I hate this type of thinking. Not like you can be small, but he, he's tough in the tackle. He yeah. he goes for duels and he wins duels. Also, he doesn't he he's one of the few players on the team who can keep the ball. He can I remember it was um it was off a corner and they we won the ball so someone headed it out and i think it was dalo or casemiro behind him yeah i remember he I, I saw him look at the ball then look at those two he said okay one of you guys is going to run up he flicked the ball backwards and then made a run and it would have been through they were statues they just stood there and i'm like he know he knows how to play ball 
everyone else on the team around him, they may not know how to. And speaking mm-hmm. of Dalo, I know I'm ranting right now, but it's Dalo, I won't, I won't let you people lie to me about Dalo. I know what my eyes see. I've played the sport. I've, I've, I've played against people who've gone to the MLS. I've played against people who've played at D1, D2. I've played against people at every level. Dalo is not who you guys think he is. He's not good. He's not good. We can. It's okay to say it. I want him to be good too. I wanted him to be good so bad. He's not. He's not it. At best, he's a backup right back for us. At best, mm-hmm. anything else besides that, no. And you know, the main indictment to show you he's not good. His final ball is the worst. <laughs> it's worse than Enron Bissaka's, and that's saying something. I'm not even joking. And this is the final thing I'll say because I know again I'm ranting. When it was the final, um, after we got the ball, after they did the free kick and we got the ball back in the final stages of the game, there was a point in time where Mason Mount had the opportunity to cross the ball into the box. This man fake shot it, ran into the middle, passed back to Dalo, and then Dalo went back to Willie. I'm like, you guys are dumb. What are you doing? It is the 98th minute of six minutes of extra time. Get the ball into the box. Bruno, Bro. Bruno kicks the ball up, right? Maguire Bro. wins the ball to Rasmus. Rasmus, I love you, but why are you doing your best Patrick Ewan impression and backing someone down there? You could have laid it off to Rashford or given it back to Maguire for a shot or put it in the box. Now's not the time to get cute. Get, Put your foot through it, please. Bro, I agree with you towards the end of the game. That was just so frustrating. It's like, send the ball into the box. I think the biggest thing, you know, and this is my last point, is that it's going to be really bad until he gets really good. I think that Idney also doing a good job behind the scenes of hiring the right people. That's going to give United a strategy. I think that a lot of times they're not very haphazard and scattergun in the transfer market, which is what you see with the squad. I think that, as you said, I think that both fullbacks need to be upgraded. Luke Shaw can't stay fit, and Delo, I don't think he's that good. I generally feel like there's so many good right backs out there, too. Michael Coyote, like we said, Kyle Walker-Peters. Um, Vanderson's also out there. There's well, also left back Leif Davis is out there. Um, you know, there's a lot of different talented players United can bring in. I just feel like there needs to be just a there needs to be a lot of technically clean players who don't look like they're chasing their first touch and a lot of baggy touches. Um, we need another striker to definitely uh, yeah. let Rashmus grow. Um, like someone like Sarah Garassi. Um, but again, listen, man, it's it's what it is at this point. We united, you know, I tweeted this like a week ago or two weeks ago how. United can still technically get top four. The only issue is they're facing Eric Ten Hag. Man. Hey, no, they're, they're playing Eric Ten Hag and they're playing Casemiro. I, I can't stand yeah. that guy. I can not lie to you. Yeah. It, I yeah. my the, I hated McTominay the most in that midfield, but mm-hmm. hey, Casemiro, you're working your way up. And it's just, even when I saw that money for Casemiro, it was funny, but it wasn't to spend that much money on the 31, 30-year-old at that time. So, hey, man. Mm. I don't even know what else to say. But you got anything else you want to add before we head out of here, man? Nah, just win the FA Cup, please. Amazing. Thank you, Toby, so much for your time. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tosin. I'm your host. Once again, this is the Manchester United edition. We will have the weekend review, the Arsenal podcast coming soon as well. Ladies and gentlemen, for myself and Tommy, we are out. Take it easy, everybody. Peace. Peace. Take a shot. Take-